I'm going to demonstrate today how to use the EEA for an end-to-end -end anastomosis for low anterior resection. You want to get it right because there's not a whole lot of chances on this, so we'll talk it through. With this, it's very important that you're, the patient's in lithotomy and you're sitting down between the patient's legs. The surgeons up at the top can't see what you're doing, so it's really important that the communication here. So anytime the surgeon says something, I'm going to repeat it so he knows that I heard him instruct me to do something or I'm also going to tell him if I'm doing something, I'm going to let him know what I'm doing and what's happening down below so he has a good handle on what's happening. So on my table back here, what I like to have is two lap sponges to help clean the lube off when I need to. And um, lubricant, you're gonna use lots of it. My EEA, the firing part, and the surgeon's going to have the anvil up on his side, it's going to be in the proximal part of the resected colon, and he's going to be feeding that on from his side. And then we're going to have to make believe a little bit, actually a lot, three dilators, which are going to be metal, and they have round balls in the end of varying sizes. Uh, three of them, each one has a different size ball, and um, it's going to be made out of metal. And then your sigmoidoscope, and I'm going to be discussing this sigmoidoscope in another video because it just takes too long for one video so you can watch that I'll put the link below so you can see it and hopefully you've looked at my one on the components of the EEA on another video so you can see that one on the YouTube channel so you come down and I want to be sure that if I haven't prepped the patient at the beginning which I prefer to prep but if not uh, then I want to look at that patient and see where the anus is because each patient may be different according to the body habitus and according to how they're actually sitting on the table. And if it's a woman, then I want to be sure about the vagina, where that is in relation to the rectum. So I just want to get a feel for it before the case starts. So when you come back to the bottom, you're going to lube up your EEA really well. And then when the surgeon's ready for you to start preparing for the EEA, you want to take your dilator. You want to get lots of goo on it. And what I'm going to do beforehand is just get a little bit of lubricant on my fingers if it's a woman and feel where the vagina is and then the, where the rectum is so that I know where they are in relationship to each other so I know where I'm going and what I'm going to go into. So you take your smallest dilator, you lube it up, and these are pretty easy to get through. See, now after I felt it with my finger, I'd be wiping it off because you want to have a good grip on things. So you take your smallest one. These pop through pretty easily. So you're going to pop through when the surgeon says he's ready. You tell him I'm advancing, I'm advancing. You will dilate up to the end of where your distal resection was. And then you'll feel a little resistance. The doctor will tell you when to stop. Then you'll do the same thing with the middle one. And I have never had to use the largest one to dilate. Usually this one's a 28 for the EEA. And that's what I see as the normal size that almost every surgeon uses. So you usually use two of those. And now I'm ready to put in the EEA. So I'm gonna lube my fingers up a little bit because I wanna help guide this in. So I lube my fingers up. You don't wanna use, you may need to dilate the anus a little bit, but you don't wanna use more than two fingers because if you dilate it up too much, then the patient's gonna have incontinence. So I put my two fingers just to be sure where I am and guide it in. It's not gonna go in with your fingers there. So when I'm there, pull my fingers out, dry them off, and now this is flat on the end, so it's not going to go through as easily as the sizers did. So you're going to feel it. You want to keep this up with the green side up at all times. You want to make sure that the trocar is all the way in, which is righty tighty, lefty loosey. So all the way in. And then you have to know the anatomy. So the rectum comes up, the sigmoids across this way, not completely straight, and then the left descending colon is this way. So you're going to be going according to the anatomy. And if you want to just look at an anatomy book and just refresh yourself on it. So when it's time to go in, you push a little bit and sometimes you have to play with a little bit. Try it again if it doesn't go in the first time. But usually if you go with a little downward motion, you're going to feel the resist resistance and then you're going to feel it pop through. Once it pops through, then it's usually a lot easier. So now you're going to advance it and you tell the surgeon, I'm advancing, I'm advancing. So you go down because it's below the bladder and the prostate 
and in women it's below the uterus. So you're going to be heading down and usually I kind of feel it hit the uh, sacrum, touch the sacrum. So you know that that's kind of the point where you're going to start changing your angle. And remember, it's on like a lever, fulcrum. So whatever you do on the outside is the opposite on the inside. So now I've hit the, that bottom, I've hit the sacrum or touched the sacrum. And now it's time to change my angle to start angling up toward the page through the sigmoid. So you turn this way and you push it through and he will tell you to aim up more, aim down more, depending on where his bow is. So you're advancing and advancing it. Now if ever, I know how how much tension I'm comfortable with. If it gets like I'm pushing too hard and I'm not comfortable with that, I will let the surgeon know and he may have to come down and check it. That doesn't happen too often and when it has happened, it's usually been because there's a stricter and then the doctor has to take care of that. So, so you advance and advance it till it gets to where he wants it. So now it's advanced, it's at the end of the anastomosis of the resections and you wanna have a little forward pressure, just slight tension on it when it's time to open the trocar. So he'll tell you when he's ready and you start turning it left to advance out the trocar and you want to keep a little tension because you don't want it to wiggle and be soft and then end up making a little larger hole than you want. You want it the same place. So he may have you adjust it and he'll tell you if he wants you to adjust it. A little forward pressure, gentle forward pressure. It's going to, you're going to feel it pop through and keep advancing it and then you might feel a little more of a resistance and a release of resistance because the tip is a little bit narrower than this part. So you may feel two little pops. Now he's from his end is going to take that anvil, which would be straight because it wouldn't have been fired. And he's going to put it on and I'm going to be quiet for a minute so you can listen to it. You may hear that click, you may not. If you don't hear the click, your instruments give you a lot of feedback. You'll feel that click, you'll feel it engage. And then when he's ready, he'll tell you to go ahead and close it. Now you keep your forward pressure when you're closing it. Now I'm turning it right to bring it down. And what you're going to feel is the bow will telescope in here a little bit as it's being pulled back. So you're going to feel that little bit of resistance, which is why you want to keep a little bit of forward, gentle forward pressure to help prevent that from telescoping too far in and then having the staple line be a little bit different from where they wanted it. So you're going to keep closing it and eventually you're going to feel a little pop when that bell levels itself out and stops telescoping. So you're going to keep closing it. This anvil here is going to be closing. You keep closing it. And then when you get the green in the window, you tell the doctor I have green. Then he knows it's time to fire it and that you're ready and he's happy with everything. He may be adjusting it here as you close it. And then when it's tight and you have green in the window, that means you're all the way down and you're ready to fire. I would still keep holding it here but because I want you to see what I'm doing. Then you release the locking mechanism. And now I want to make sure my hands are completely dry. If there's any goo on them, I take it off. And then I want to stand up because I want to get a good grip on it. So I would stand up, tell him ready to fire. And when he tells me to fire, grip it with both hands. You want a one clean squeeze that will make the staple line nice and clean and neat. You don't want a jagged cut, so you want to be sure you're in a good position to give it a good squeeze. So you say, ready, and then you fire it. You hear that click? When you fire it, some of the surgeons may want you to hold it uh, for 10 seconds. And you just say, how long you want to kind of let go now, or he'll let you know when. And then you release it. The next thing you do is put the safety back on. Now you're ready to open it. And that's what this here tells you, to turn it two complete turns to open it, to release it. So two complete turns is four of these, and the new ones now have a click so you know when to stop. So Lefty Lucy, one, two, and that's one turn, three, four, and that's two turns. You heard that click? That's the click that you're going to hear. Now you can see it's open enough now that I can bring it out. You don't want to do any more than that two clicks. And I'm going to sit down just so you can see me. You don't want to do any more than that two clicks because you don't want this to come loose and end up in the bell and then you'd have to do uh, another resection and you have to fish it out. So you don't want to do any more than, than until you hear that click. So now you have it. This is on the one side of the anastomosis. This is on the other. So some gentle pressure. You're going to have a little resistance as this goes through the staple line. And then you'll feel it pop out. And then at that point, you can just pull it out and you're done with your resection. 
now you're ready for the sigmoidoscope and that will be in another video because you want to test and make sure there's no leaks but the one thing you do want to check now is you have rings of tissue you should have two complete rings from the proximal and distal side of the resected bowel and you want to make sure that those rings are thick and full if there's not any area that is thin or absent so that's why you want to keep it on here and look and see if the rings are good you want to keep it in this position because then you would know where it was thin in relation to where it is on this and what I usually end up doing is I look at the rings but then I will usually hold it up and show it to the surgeon so he can also look at it and assess it and then you go to the sigmoidoscope to do the leak test to make sure that you don't have any bubbles and we'll talk about that in another video